to um, First Peter, the second chapter. Today we're going to be dealing with the panel. We're coming from the topic from from milk to mysteries. I want to turn this up a little bit? From milk to mysteries. I want to make your mom some coffee? First Peter two. First Peter two and two. We're going to be dealing with mysteries, uh, from milk to mysteries. Let's see if we can stroll. If we got a good class today, we'll be able to stroll pretty quickly. And, uh, and you know how that thing roll. All right, let's let's just go there right quick. And that's going to be um, after Hebrews, I believe. Um, James, James, then Peter, go to Peter, first Peter two and two. A lot of people have this idea that you have to <clears throat> come into the gospel and you're just this super courageous individual, um, a person that knows everything, but that's simply that's not true. That's not the truth of the matter. And so we want to give some, some logical, um, uh, a logical blueprint that we can follow that will make us comfortable to go through whatever it is that we need to go through as a believer. Have you found it right there? I'll say, okay. So look, here we go. Verse Peter 2 and 2. Why don't you read that right quick? And um, when we welcome um, Prophetess Lopez to the panel, can we give God a hand clap of praise for her? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's try it again. We about to go to our first verse of scripture today. First Peter two and two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those who are in sprinkle land, you know, we like to celebrate when we do our first verse of scripture. We celebrate God for cracking open a word in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. All right, everybody write this down in your notes. Milk does a body good. Milk does a body good. Milk does a body good. Milk is the primary source of nutrition before the ability to digest any other type of food. Okay? And so we need milk in order to grow. And so when we are learning first verse of scriptures, first, what is that? John 3.16, scriptures like that. Uh, what is John 3.16? For, John, for God to love the world. That's right. In Romans 10 and 9, those are milk scriptures. You know, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Those are considered milk scriptures. And, and milk is generally something that we all need coming into the gospel. And generally, to be true, true be told, nothing's wrong with milk. Amen. The problem with milk is staying on milk. That's the problem. When you want to live on milk for the rest of your life, what happens to that individual, they become malnutrition. Uh, and generally, a child, when they, they accept milk, we have children. And once they become of age, what, about eight months, sometimes a little bit younger, they start really, really throwing temper tantrums. The reason why is because as we grow, the need to have more stability or more food is required. And so your body is screaming for more. Somebody say, my body, my body. is screaming for, more. screaming for more. So milk is a primary source of nutrition. What do you think about that, Prophetess? Well, milk, like you said, does a body good. And one of the things that uh, we know milk, it helps keep the bone strong uh, because without different facets of uh, vitamins, some people go through osteoporosis where it starts to chip away at the bone. So you have to look at it as it's a, a foundation. You have to start off somewhere. So without milk, you won't have a foundation to stand on and you build from that point. 
Like the Bible says, from faith to faith, glory to glory. Hallelujah. Everybody say with me, I must. I must have a foundation, have a foundation to, manifest. to manifest. So generally when you come into the gospel, you can't manifest until you first have a what? Foundation. foundation. Milk is considered what? Foundation. foundation. And so milk comparison to children. Milk in comparison to children. Matthew 18 and 3 says, and, and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be what converted and become as a little child you shall not enter into the kingdom of god right. and so right there you write that down that is the newborn stage newborn childlike right newborn dash childlike stage that's the newborn stage then we move into the second stage again we're building on a foundation right, right. remember i must have a foundation to what Manifest. Say it again. I must have a foundation to manifest. Say, I want to manifest. I want to manifest. Hallelujah. We want to manifest His glory in our lives. Amen. We want to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to turn to First Corinthians fourteen and twenty. For the second stage after newbornness, it would be sincerity. We need sincerity. You ever, you ever known somebody in church that just don't like people? Just mean. Amen. What are you doing in church for? You're going to be mean anyway. Hey, that, that let you, yeah, that lets you know that they done skipped some stages. All right? Just mad. Life is just, you know, getting them. 14 and 20. 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Watch what it says here. What does it say right here, prophets? Look, that thing is too slow. What does it say? Brothers and brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. Be like babes as far as evil is concerned. But be grown up in your thinking. In the law it is written. Through people who speak unfamiliar languages and through the lips of strangers. All right, all right, all right. Everybody sit with me. I must, I must change my thinking. Change my thinking. Now, number two would be sincerity. The only way that you can change your thinking, you need to come in a sincere place. You need to be willing. Somebody say, I'm willing. I'm willing. So you come as a newborn, right? right. Then as you get your milk, you earnestly desire more of God. With what? So, so you can't come with an agenda. I'm just gonna come yeah. and you know, I'm gonna blow up, I'm gonna get blessed, you know, and you know, I'm gonna bounce type of attitude. You, you ever known somebody like that? Yeah. Wanna just use you, you know? They don't call you for 10 weeks, but as soon as they need something, they call you, hey, you know, I love you. <laughs> you ever had somebody like that in your life? They only wanna holler at you when it's, when it's payday? Two times out the month, the first and the fifteenth, yeah. they pop up. <laughs> well, you gotta have a, you gotta be sincere about what you do, right? right? All right. Number three, growth. You go from newborn babe, sincerity, growth, growth. For uh, go to Job seventeen and nine quickly. I told you we're gonna stream through this today. If we can be a good class, y'all work with me. We can get on out of here. We do some amens. Y'all act like y'all invested into this. Oh Amen. God. And let God do. No, seriously. You got to be sincere about it, though. You let God pour into you. We can be a body in a few minutes. Amen. Y'all want to stay here long? No. Don't say amen. We're going to be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say amen. Then oh go to sleep God. for sure. Watch what. Oh, my God. <laughs> you there? Yes. We, we're going to go to Job 17 and 9. Y'all see it on the screen there, right? Amen. All right, go ahead, read, brother. But godly people will keep doing what is right. Those who have clean hands will grow stronger. Amen. So you know you got to have, somebody say, I need, I need clean, hands. clean hands. Amen. You can't do the work of the Lord with dirty hands. Does that make sense? Not literally. Huh? Not literally. I mean, not literally, you know, but spiritually. You know, you're dipping your, your hands is somewhere else that it ought not be. <laughs> Wherever it may be at. Yeah. Yeah. And here it is, you want to do the work of the Lord. Yeah. But don't feel bad if your hands are still dirty. Because that's still the newborn stage. Sometimes children get into things. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, sometimes they know that they shouldn't touch that wire, but 
intrigueness. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it, they, they want to do it anyway. And so generally as a newborn, even when you come in sin sincerity, you sometimes mess up. You know, the church try to make us feel bad because we mess up. Well, you've been in church for three years, you're still messing up. Come on, now we're human. You know, you're going to mess up. You're going to slip up sometimes. And, you know, and generally with a child, you got to slap them on. Come on. No, don't go over there. You know, you got to remind them. That's what's called God's love right there. He said, I chastise the ones that I what? Love. love. And so right here it says strength. We need to grow in what? Strength. Somebody say, I need to grow. I need to grow. In strength. In strength. So we got to grow. All right. After the groundwork, we learn to produce miracles. And so... We, in order to produce a miracle, listen to me. If you're going to produce a miracle, go to Matthew 6 and 6. You have to know how to step in the spirit. You can't produce a miracle for God on the flesh, on the outward appearance. You got to, okay, street fighter. I don't know what the games that they have now. What's, what's, what's the, let's, let's use Call of Duty for a moment. You have the gun. You can have the outer appearance of the gun all you want. But it's not until you pull that trigger, right? right. That's when it's going to have a spontaneous combustion. And it's going to blow. The, 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 the missile or the bullet is going to come out of the gun. You got it? Is, is anybody remember Street Fighter up in here? Yeah. All right. I don't know what games they have like that right now. But... Killer instinct? Or they do they have powers? Yeah, this one dude, he has this he has this sword and then he takes it out and it just flames up. Take, now, watch this. He takes it out, it flames up. Whatever. The, the, the sword flame up. Right? Where does the fire come from for, from the flame? In the sword. Think about it. Like usually you know, we just be playing and we you know we just I remember Ken, a dude, Ken. Where that fire, where that flame comes from? Think about it. See, that's right. Remember, the groundwork is to learn. Somebody say, learn how to produce miracles. You, we have to learn how to produce miracles. When God has invested His Spirit on the inside of us, there is miracles that is wrapped up on the inside of us. But we have to learn how to utilize what we have on the inside of us. Now let's get it'll be wrapped up. It won't grow. Amen. And so we have to be like Mr. Miyagi, you know, in what's his name? Karate, Karate Kid. And we've got to learn how to wax on and wax on. Right. He was in training. Right. right? Wax on. Wax on. Like, why well, I got to do that? Just do it. Because, you know, the moves that you're doing, you're going to utilize in battle. Some people are like, well, why I got to pray? Because the moves that you're using you when you get into battle, you're going to utilize that to kill the enemy or, or rather to tear down the stronghold. Yeah. Why I got to fast? Because the moves that you utilize utilizing when it comes time to give a miracle, you're going to be on point. You ain't going to be looking around like, what's going on? You're going to be ready. The power, somebody said, the power, the power. is in me. Say it again. The power, the power. Come on, say it like you mean it. The power, the power is in me. Is in me. A duke. A duke. <laughs> Ken knew his power. He knew his. And so when it came down to him, when he got in a tough situation, he took, he said, okay, oh, you think, oh, you can you know, he did this, you know, drew the fire out. How many of you know you got fire? Yeah, man. That's why, you know, Ty Curry said, Give me that fire. Give me that flame. What is Matthew 6 and 6 saying? Y'all look up that right down that middle part. It says, when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray with your father who can't, who can't be seen. He will reward you. Your father sees. Somebody say, I want a reward. I want a reward. The power is a reward. Amen. Provision is a reward. Hallelujah. You might be broke right now. But when you go into secret, what? Prayer, he rewards you, what? Oh, openly. Right. You was broke openly before. Right. Sure. You went in private broke, sure. but you came out rich. Y'all not talking to me up here. Hallelujah. You, you went in private 
all depressed and mad and angry and everybody, but you came out happy and joyous Amen. and ready to provoke whoever it is that's trying to stop you from your joy. Amen. You get it? Get it. Got it. All right, that's the groundwork. Somebody say groundwork. Groundwork. Romans 8 and 1, watch this. There is something that is always driving. Okay, so you have to look at your body like a tank. Look at it like that in the home. Y'all got to... Uh, y'all working good too. Let me try to. Y'all working with me, so I'm gonna have to keep my word, huh? Amen. Word is your I mean, I'm gonna have to keep my word, huh, brother V? Gotta keep it. All right. <laughs> Romans, Romans eight and one. What does it say right there? Those who belong to Christ Jesus are no longer under God's sentence. Mm -hmm. I am now. Romans eight and one. Just You're gonna, you know. Just go to King James. What's that? Oh, in? see, you know how to work this. Well, that's it right there. Just hit it one good time. Go on. Go on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus and who walk after the flesh, but, I'm sorry, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right, so everybody say with me. The spirit, the spirit runs, the runs the vehicle of the flesh. Of the flesh. That's why when God blew on flesh, it was the spirit that quickened the flesh. Somebody missed that one right there. Nah, it. It's the spirit that what? Quickened. Quickened the flesh. So is the everybody say what I mean? The spirit, the spirit runs, runs the vehicle, the vehicle of, the flesh. of the flesh. So my question to you is, what spirit is driving your vehicle right now? What spirit is driving you? Is anger driving your vehicle? Because there's always a spirit. In other words, it's a tank. Your body is a tank. And there's a man that's inside of your, your tank that's driving it. You ever heard somebody say, man, they just driving me right now, man. You, you, you done got me on drove right now. You ever heard somebody say that? That's because there's a spirit that's, on, that's tapped into your spirit that you didn't open up your tank to and say, come on in. You got the power to let somebody drive your tank. Or you to drive your own tank. Amen. Now what you gonna do? You gonna drive your own tank? Yeah. Or you gonna let somebody else drive yours? Nah. They're gonna move you out the way, move around. It's mine. It's mine. I'm gonna make you angry. I'm gonna make you mad. Huh? Make you frustrated. So it's the spirit it said there is no condemnation. You gotta listen to that. There is no condemnation to those who are in what? Christ. Christ. I'm in Christ, and Christ is driving my vehicle by the spirit. Amen. Okay. When we move in the flesh. Our unsigned assignment kills us. So there's a there's, let me tell you something. Whenever and we get into this thing, whenever uh, we move in the in the flesh, we always give up the keys, right, to our assignment. That's right. All right. So because our vehicle was made to go to certain places, but when we give up the keys to your vehicle. You give up the keys for the enemy to do whatever he want to do with you. Oh, that's right. That's good. right? Like and he starts to run the show. Right. I mean, who's a punk up in here? Lift up your hand. You a punk. You a pushover. Come on, lift up your hand. You know you what you... <laughs> Don't lie. Amen. Ain't no punks with... Hallelujah. Because I'm from the hood. We don't play that over here. And, you know, I, and I'm not from the other kind of hoods. You know, some hoods, they just let things slide. I'm from the hood that you ain't nothing gonna slide. I, nothing. Nothing. Amen. And, but here's the thing when you start to step into the spirit, you move into your destiny. You, 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 you're following the right map, right? You get to your destination, you get to your blessed place. But when you move into the flesh, you always step into your unassigned assignment. Like, for instance, your unassigned assignment becomes your God or becomes your villain. Um, the tree that Adam wasn't supposed to eat, he was not assigned to that tree. Right. But that tree now became an assignment to him after he he's ate he's off of it. Right. So whatever came with that tree, he has to now deal with whatever wow. comes with that. So that's like somebody getting in trouble, they want to be free again. Yeah. No, the thing said you need to do 10 years. You need to do that. A dude on Facebook. I wish I wish you could pull it up right quick. That a dude on Facebook. Tall. He was in a yeah, he was a thug. He was uh going to jail, right? The judge said you're gonna get three years. He went, ooh. 
He looking at, at the bailiff. Whoo, what do you mean? Then she, when she went to getting on two, three years, and then she got to five years, he fell out in court. He was crying. Wow. I'm talking about this talk dude. He like about right there. Wasn't thugging no more. Nah. He, I'm talking about he was assaulting battery, everything. But what happened to all that thug? Right. What happened to that thug when you was in front of the judge? He was crying like a baby. The, you, hallelujah. They, they, they was trying to pick him up. He wasn't staying yeah. on. So <laughs> if, yeah, they, they, he actually fell. And you ever see a grown man just fall down? Just blue. <laughs> and so what happened in his case is, is that whatever you do, you need to take your leg. Come on, look yeah, at your neighbor right. and say, take your own leg. Take, take your own leg. Come on, come on. That's that's real. Even the streets let you know that. You, you know, you, you know. Take your leg. Mm -hmm. Come on, Lucio. There you go. Amen. That was yours? Yeah. All right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you, if you make your bed, you need a what? Lying. Come on, say it. So, so think about this here. Listen to me, everybody. If you do something, you got caught with it, or you got caught, you don't turn snitch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. You don't turn snitch on the one that you did it with. Right. So you can get a lesser charge. charge or you can get, you know, you turn in state. Right. You're not talking to me up in here. Yeah, you telling the truth. Hallelujah. Now see, let me tell you something. If you didn't do it, that's a whole different category now. You get where I'm going with this here? Somebody trying to put something on you and say, well, I was with him, he did it. No, nah, bro, you're going to take your own leg, man. Because when we get back there, this is about to go down, you tripping. I'm not taking nobody leg. I'm not taking your stuff. You did this here, you need a, hallelujah. It's just like, you know, even with children, you know, you, you in school, you the one who wrote on the board. The teacher said, who did it? And you, you just shut up. <laughs> and I wish somebody would say something. <laughs> you know? And somebody say, well, he did it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be me. You know, you need to take your lick. It's part of the game, right? Right. But well, here's the thing. Adam, he broke the rules, so he had to deal with whatever rules came with it. Yeah. Paul. Turn it down a little bit, prophetess. Paul. There was Paul. He was called to the Gentiles. Listen to me. He was called to the Gentiles, but he went after the Jews. But it was because of his unassigned assignment. That killed him. It was that that killed him. Right. Whenever you, somebody said, whenever, whenever. I step out of my assignment, I, step out of my assignment. I, run I run into danger. That's right. Um, that was Balaam the prophet as well. Mm -hmm. God told him to go straight over there, give the prophecy, go back home. Amen. He gave the prophecy, but on his way home, he met another prophet. The other prophet said, the Lord told me, you know, you to come on in my house and we're going to eat and break bread. What he did, he went in the house, sat down and ate. Ate, whenever he left, on his way home, because he was disobedient to God, there was an animal or something that killed him on the side of the road. Now, that same prophet that lied and said, you were supposed to come and eat with me, he was the one that went up the road, picked up his dead body, and married him. His unassigned assignment became his own enemy. How many assignments in your life have now become your enemy because you put your hands in something that has nothing to do with you? Amen. Think about that. We must grow in the spirit while the flesh deteriorates. So the more that we seek God, the more that we let Jesus run our flesh, run our spirit rather, that's when the more powerful, you know, we, we grow into the spirit. So you started off from milk, right? Turn to 1 Corinthians 9 and 2. I have one, two, exactly two more scriptures, and this is one of them. We'll be finished for the day. What does it say? First Corinthians 9 and 2. It says, If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless. Hold on. Yeah, you that one. Yeah. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are in ye, in the Lord. Mm, come on, let me look. 
look up that right quick. There's a scripture. There's a scripture. Hold on. And while I'm, while I'm looking up that, go to Romans um, 9. Go to your internet right quick. Go to Romans 8 and 9. Give me a second. We rich. We rich. Ain't going nowhere. Come on now, this thing here is cool. Let's just, uh, no, it's, it's going to mess up. All right, let's just move on. Let's just go to another verse of scripture here. Let's do this. Let's just do one more scripture. Go to um, Romans 8 and 19. Again, we deal dealing with, we must grow into the spirit while we what? Die to the what? Flesh daily. What is dying to the flesh? Sometimes dying to the flesh means stepping away from the television. Sometimes dying to the flesh means sometimes stepping away from the Xbox 360. Facebook. Facebook. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Food. Starbucks. Whatever it means, uh, you know, to die to the flesh to you, you know, and, and it's important that we do die to the flesh so that we can give Jesus his room to do what he needs to do in our lives. Now turn your attention to Romans 8 and 19. What it says right here. What it says, Romans 8 and 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, somebody said with me, I'm preparing. I'm preparing. For our manifestation. For our manifestation. So here's what we need to look at. Is that while we die to the flesh daily, we are not the only ones that is in hopes of us dying ourselves. We have an entire world. Listen to me. The entire world. Now, we talked last week that we have dominion over the fish, over the birds, over the earth. We have the lease agreement, right? Now, I need you to understand that as you move into the spirit, as you move from dimension to dimension, the earth itself 
is screaming, waiting for us to step into the power and the ability that God has what? Given us. In other words, the earth listens to us. When we grow in power, but if you got low power, the earth won't listen to anything you have to say. Somebody said, the more I grow, the more the earth listens. The earth is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. So what are you manifesting in your life right now? Think about it. Whatever, whatever power you have to manifest in the earth's surface, it reveals the power that you carry. Now, the idea is to move from what? Faith to faith. Glory to glory. So here's a recap. You come in, it's okay to drink what? Milk. milk. Right. It's all right, right? We move from drinking milk, right? Yeah. As a newborn, we come in with what? Sincerity. Mm -hmm. We grow. After that, we press in to press out. Right. We go into the spirit to press out. Remember, it was the spirit that awoken the flesh. So it's, you can always you can be in a dead situation. But once you get the spirit to take hold of that, of that thing, that dead situation will now become alive. So I want you to look in your lives right now. What is dead? What is dead that needs to come alive? Come on, turn something on. We finish. What is dead that needs to 